Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show off how to make the no backup plan on Zotic viable for endgame purposes, including raids and GMs. With the recent Zotic tuning, the following Zotic has now been expanded on to allow players with a thing for shotguns to use them more often in whatever content you have in mind, and boy, does it not fail. Not only can you get an overshield and health regen from shotgun kills, but you can also refresh the current shield from kills and also get a 35% damage buff all from one simple exotic. People have been quite hesitant with using this as of lately, but the exotic when paired with the conditional finality shotgun makes an incredible endgame combo that I can see being perfectly used in grandmaster environments once they get released. With what I have to show for today's build, you're going to be making full use of the build from start to finish with how effective it is against bosses, etc. To start, you're going to want to have Bastion, where casting your super grants overshield to your allies. Casting a barricade also grants you and your allies overshields, while also regenerating lost shielding. Then you want offensive bulwark, where upon having an overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extended duration of overshields. The subclass effects will focus on providing users the best of both worlds set up for damage and survival. With Bastion at play, we can utilize the damage reduction being provided and then make full use of our grenades to disperse groups easily. This will all link back into how new backup plans will work on a more common scale instead of how it used to be before. The fragments used are Echo Persistent, where void abilities apply to you, such as overshields have increased duration. Echo of Instability, where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds. Echo Cessation, where finish your final blows create a burst of void damage that makes targets around you volatile. Defeating a volatile target also grants void breach. And lastly, Echo of Starvation, where picking up an orb of power grants devour. We are using the same setup we used last time when building into the user's overshields and max survivability. The following combo will make using any void weapon with a pulse of place on it very effective from start to finish, while also making our shotgun more harder hitting. Persistence will increase our base shield duration by an extra few seconds, while cessation and instability will make targets volatile, which both of these will allow us to make full use of a pulse of brace on a larger scale. These are all important, as they all tie back into how fast we can get our abilities while we have an overshield available via Bastion. Simply, by us utilizing these effects to the fullest, we'll not only have increased ability regen, but protection and health regen will always be available for the user once one of the many effects kick in. For the modern stats section, as we are using no backup plan instead of the standard Heart of Imbus Light or Hemlock Set 14, it means that our focus should be a lot more straightforward in terms of support and base abilities. Resilience at tier 10 is ideal for the 30% damage reduction and also for faster class ability regen that will play a huge part in the build. However, tier 7 is a good spot to aim for as long as you make full use of those void breaches provided that will give you a 10% class ability regen and the final endurance mod that will give you a plus 30 towards resilience stat while your armor charges are active. If you want to really make full use of the seasonal void mods given, then onto the Breach and Protective Breach are two key mods that can make the build even more sustainable. A Discipline is the same as we have ours at tier 7, but we'll also be making use of the number of benefits from our subclass alone. The Offensive Bulwark aspect will be granting us a steady regen rate of grenade energy every time we have our overshields up, which when combined with the Frontal Focus mod for plus 30 towards our current stat, means that we can get a tier 10 stat with fast ability regen on top of it, you can further supplement this with distribution or bomber mods for each time you use your class abilities, but this will depend on what your mod slots are like afterwards. This of course is the easiest path to achieve without needing to have a lot of investment put into it, and if you have this suppression grenade on hand, then the cooldown rate you have will be a lot more shorter than other grenades. After the main parts are complete, you should have room to add on the armor charges and additional mods now. Charged up times 1 will extend how many armor charges we can hold on to by plus 1, while Void Weapon Surge times 2 will increase all Void Weapons by 17% for however long our armor charges are active. Time Dilation will help this further by providing an extra 5 seconds to all time based mods, and having Void Siphon, Elemental Charge, and Powerful Friends will make getting charged with light a lot more easier in the long run. I would then lastly recommend you add on the special armor finder and scavenger mods to help with your secondary weapon usage. 
Now, lastly, for weapons, you have a lot of room to pick here in terms of primary secondary, with the primary slot being aimed and focused on how many repulsive place on it. For this, we have the age or bond AR with repulsive place and golden tricon. Although not the god war I was after, the newly reprised weapon can be farmed and gotten from doing the last wish raid of the week for multiple farming opportunities. Ideally, you won't get the version that has destabilizer mount for it, so you can proc an overshield each time you need a kill, but just having RP on hand is also very much viable. Its damage is highly effective in end game content, as it's a high impact frame, which means it has more range than most ARs in game, which also makes it a persuader scout rifle in some scenarios. Now, sadly, there's not a lot of free to play weapons that can get their following weapon or perk available with ease. So, Freedom of Roy weapons is accessible here, you don't need to go with what I currently got. Yesteryear, Pulse and Bottom Dollar are flexible and perks, both Void, and can be gotten from the Drifter when doing Gambit, which should be free to all players. After that, having the conditional finality with the setup also makes the build a powerhouse in the Grandmaster content. The damage buff from Bubble and no backup planner, along with weapons Solum and Stasis Effects, means that we can take on Tormentors pretty well without them hurting us too much. On top of that, it also allows us the ability to keep tougher enemies within the bubble effect for longer as they can't escape if we're using stasis shot on them over and over again, thus making certain enemy types a lot more bearable. If you don't have the following, then a weapon with a 1-2 punch or any shotgun is fine here, such as the Ragnar Deep shotgun that can drop as a world drop. The main core strength of the build comes from our ability to always retain overshield from small engagements to large ones, and with the recent update, this has made it fairly easier to achieve this. In the past, I have covered the void build with the shocker and Hammer 14 usage in endgame content, as I saw how perfectly matched the two are when entwined into each other. That build did fairly well, and made engaging with friends to champions a lot more safer while you are within your bubble. As we have swapped out Saint Fourteen Helm for a note backup plan, not a lot has changed, but there are still some key things that are made more noticeable. For example, just getting an overshield from any source would give our shotgun a 35% weapon buff without the need of bubble on demand. Secondly, although we have no blood effect from past setups, we do have suppression grenades that are also very powerful in their own right. Thirdly, we are not tied down to just one shotgun to make the build work but however, we have a lot of room to pick and choose what we want. It's still powerful on its own, as the following subclass provides both survivability and lethal aid all in one, and the flexibility of the build allows players to mix and match gear to accommodate areas that you can't currently achieve. By combining an already powerful weapon with a new backup plan, you can create a build that allows aggressive players to be aggressive in ending content. Something that not a lot of people would agree on doing so, but the option to do so is now opened ever so slightly. Only downside to using the build is how fast your overshields can get depleted against tougher enemies, but this can be easily reinforced and prevented just by allowing them to come to you to close the gap, or even put down a barricade slash bubble onto the target and let rip. Overall, a welcoming impact for the exotic I've long missed, but what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub right here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.